Hi, this is Kurt Wang, a landscape photographer based in Toronto, Canada. Welcome to my channel. Here, I will tell you my photography stories, share my knowledge and skills, and make photography friends. Hello, my friend. Welcome to my channel. This is Kurt Wang. Today, I'm going to talk about Milky Way photos. Milky Way is a very popular topic and subject for landscape photographer. I got many uh, questions from uh, other photographers and a friend. They want to know how to shoot Milky Way photos. Let's talk about it today. First is when to shoot Milky Way. First, you need to pick a very clear sky. So make sure you check weather forecast. So the day you're gonna shoot Milky Way have to be a clear sky. There's no cloud. Maybe a little bit cloud is okay, but ideally it should be clear sky. Secondly, the moon have a lot of impact to Milky Way. If there is a bright moon in the sky, you may not get a good photo of Milky Way because moon, moon have a lot of light at night just like the sun during the day. So usually during the new moon, you get better chance to get better Milky Way photos. However, it really depends. So you can also uh, use some of the app and the information online to find out the timing. Sometimes it's not new moon, you can still get the photo. How? It's you find out the window, the gap. For example, a couple of days ago, I got Milky Way shot when it's, uh, it's like 70% moon. It's still very bright. However, the milk is up around 10.30ish, and the moon is up at 10.50, almost close to 11 o'clock. So I got like 30 minutes gap. I can shoot milk with bef before moon is up. And plus, when the moon is just, just up around the horizon, it's not that bright. It's still low. So I got like uh, an, an hour, you know, also, uh, you know, window to get my Milky Way photo down. This is the time lap I took at that night. As you can see, it was so good at the beginning. When moon's up, the light impact a lot. I would suggest you can find out the timing uh, by using photo pill. It gives you very accurate timing of the Milky Way and the moon. It will, they will tell you where where the moon uh, when the moon is up and where the direction of the moon and when milk is up where the direction of milk way for example a couple of days ago uh, the situation for me is the moon is up on the left side and the milk way is, is on the right side they have a big gap big angle right it's not like they overlay or pretty close i got i got good opportunity to get the shot down second is uh, is also very important question as uh, where to shoot Milky Way photo. The location is very important. It's not everywhere you can get Milky Way shot. Though the Milky Way is always in the sky, but you need to find the place very dark, very low light, polluted. Uh, I would suggest you you can um, use this website called um, uh, DarkSideFinder.com. It will tell you a uh, it will show you a uh, light pollution map. To show you which part of the the earth or close to your area is darker, so usually it's hard to to see the Milky Way in the city or where the loss of light pollution. You may have to go somewhere far or remote. The other way you can identify the the location is uh, using the uh, the Bordo scale system. It's it's created by John Bordo. I remember this back in 2001. This Bordeaux class skill system have a nine class from class one to class nine. 
Class one is the darkest. Class nine is the brightest, which is have the most light pollution. If you live in a big city,、um, I don't know New York, Toronto, Shanghai, or Singapore, some big city, you're probably in class nine because that's the most light polluted area. You won't see Milky Way. You may see just a few stars. So class one is the darkest place. Usually, it's remote area. Probably nobody living there. You know, you know, somewhere pretty remote.、Uh, I would see if you want to find a location, try to pick somewhere in between class five to class one. So class five is more for for you to practice. You will get Milky Way probably not that strong. Not that noticeable, but you can still see it. And class four and above is much better. Ideally, class three, two, one are the best. So make sure you check the location you're interested. Make sure it's really dark enough for you to get the Milky Way photo. Okay, the third question we're gonna talk about: What gears are required for Milky Way photo? That's very interesting topic because. You know, you gotta know what you need to bring at night to get the Milky Way photo. First is camera for sure. You can use a full frame or crop sensor; doesn't matter. They can also they can all do the job. And a sturdy tripod. Make sure you have a sturdy tripod. And、uh, the the third thing is is very important is the lens. Not all the lens can shoot Milky Way easily. Ideally, is a large aperture lens. They can do better job. For example, f 2.8 lens, f 1.8, f 1.4 lens. Ideally,、uh, you can use、uh, prime lens. Prime lens is better, like 1.8 lens. They usually can do a good job. However, kid lens, f 2, especially f 2.8 lens, they can do a good job too.、Uh, the other, the other thing about lens is.、Uh, It depends on what you want to get, right? For beginner, I would suggest you the wide angle lens, right? Something like sixteen、um, to thirty-five, or some fourteen millimeter, or even twenty-four millimeter, right? Something a little bit wide, you can get more milk in your frame. Later on, when you more familiar with those settings, maybe you can shoot something different, right? Maybe use a fifty millimeter, seventy-five millimeter. Something different. You can even use long lens, or you can do stacking or stitching. Lots of way to do that. As a begin, as a beginning, I would suggest you use a wide angle lens. There's other thing also required for Milky Way photo.、Uh, some of them are like very necessary. Some of them are optional, right?、Uh, this thing is a must. <sighs> Headlight. So. Because it's very dark, right? You need to make sure you have a, you have a headlight or light resource will help you.、Uh, buy those headlight with the red light, because the the white light sometimes is too strong. So make sure you have a good headlight. And if you're shooting Milky Way in summer, right, close to water or trees, make sure you carry、um, bug repellent. Make sure you soak yourself, and then you won't get lots of、uh, mosquito bite. Also,、uh, I would suggest you bring some、uh, extra clothes in case it's pretty cold after midnight, and bring some、uh, snack with you. So make sure, for sure, water too, right? Make sure、um, when you get thirsty, hungry, you have、uh, something to eat and drink.、Um, The rest of things is depend on situation. Mostly, like this are the necessary gear that you you need to bring. Now let's talk about how to focus when shooting Milky Way photo. First, you need to use a manual focus. There are several methods you can do.、Uh, the first one I would suggest is you focus on a bright star. That one works for most cases. So point your camera to a bright star. And make sure that star is in focus. Usually, most of the camera have a magnifier. You can zoom in and check the focus. You will see that star is look like big blur dot. And then you turn your focus manual focus ring until you become sharp and like a pinpoint. And then you lock it. 
and then take a test shot, make sure the photo look good, and then that's it, and then don't touch it, you're good to go. The other way to do it is, uh, if you see there's a other light resource, at least 50 meter away from you, they're not star. Could be some, some house light or street light, something from far away, you can focus on those light. That'll do the same job, just like you focus star in the sky. As a locket, it will do the same job. And you can even use autofocus, focus on those light resource. Once it's in focus, switch, switch autofocus to manual focus. Another way to do it is if you can get to the location earlier, probably during the sunset, before the sky becomes dark, you can set up your camera, make sure it focuses from far. Everything's okay, you lock the focus and don't touch the camera. Wait until when, when it gets dark and then you, you can get the camera ready to shoot the milk away. Still, I would suggest you practice the first method that's mostly used and, and also probably you, you, you wouldn't get a chance to get to the location early. Probably you don't have other light resource. Focus on the star is the easiest and the most effective way. Now let's talk about the camera setting. Camera setting is very important. Once you start shooting, you start with your largest aperture. Uh, if you have 1.8 lens, go all the way to 1.8. You have 1.4 lens, go all the way to 1.4. Use the largest aperture. And for the ISO, I would suggest start with the ISO 5000 or 4000. It depends. I would go with a higher ISO. If it works pretty good, I'm probably going to lower that to maybe 3200 or 2500. It depends. I usually start with ISO 5000. For shutter speed, it's a little bit tricky. If you use, you use full frame camera, you can follow 500 rule. What does 500 rule mean? Use your use 500 divided by your focal lens. If you're shooting a 24 millimeter lens, right? 500 divided by 24, what you got? Pretty much 20, it's 20 second. So that means within, within 20 second, you can get a star with a good shape without star traveling. It won't create a star trail. If your shutter speed is too long, you will see they become a star trail. You will see a line. If you zoom in, they're no longer dot, they become lines. If 500 row doesn't work for your full frame camera, sometimes I found I follow 500 row, still see a little bit uh, star trail, right? I will then use 300 row. Similar, use 300 divided by focal length, you will get the, the time. So you can use that as a guideline for your photo. You can adjust a little bit, but that's how you start with. If you use a crop sensor camera, you use 300 roll. You use 300 divided by your focal length, and you get how many seconds you need to shoot. That's how we shoot Milky Way photo at the beginning. Once you see the photo, uh, you will know if, if it's too overexposed or underexposed, you can adjust your shutter speed and your ISO. Your already shutter speed, you probably can't go too much because you, you've got to follow the 500 or 300 rules and uh, make sure it won't go too much. But ISO, you can play with. That's how you shoot milk with photo. There's a more technique to shoot milk with. Uh, people can use the Astro Tracker to track the Milky Way and also you can shoot multiple photos and stack them by using some software and also you can also uh, shoot a, a serial photo, a different part of the Milky Way, different part of the sky and stitch them together. There's many ways we can do with Milky Way photo, but for beginner, so this is uh, more important for you to know what you need to uh, prepare, when, where to go, and how you set up your camera to get your first Milky Way shot. I hope you like this video. Try the tip I told you. I hope you get amazing Milky Way photo. 
I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.